I'm Weston Pace. I am a software developer. I work on the Apache Arrow project, and I'm talking to you today about Acero, which is an Arrow native C++ streaming query engine. Okay, so first question is, what is a query engine? Uh, I like to think about it by looking at what do Postgres, Pandas, and Spark all have in common. Uh, these are fairly different solutions. They solve very different problems. But they all have to do this querying and transformation of data. So if you think of a SQL query, you might have select star from table where x is less than 100 and x is greater than 0. Um, in order to apply that filter, you're going to have to do the comparison operation. You're going to have to filter out the rows as they're coming through. Uh, there's some work there to fulfill that query. In Pandas, you can have the exact same operation on a data frame. You can have a large data frame, and you say, I want a smaller data frame by filtering to just the rows where x is less than 100 and x is greater than 0. Um, again, the comparison, the filtering is going to be very similar. Apache Spark is a fairly different application, but again, in your Spark graph, you could have a node that's filtering data with the exact same x is less than 100 and x is greater than zero condition. So that transforming um, querying of data as it's passing through some kind of system is what I would call a query engine. And the way Acero looks at it is a query engine is something that takes in batches of data and it spits out transformed batches on the other end. And it takes in a query plan or an execution plan that describes the transformation that we want to apply. So let's just go over kind of a simple example here. We have source data, two sources. Uh, as far as Acero is concerned, a source is just a stream of record batches. So this could be a lot of different things. You could have a collection of CSV files or parquet files or whatever on disk. It could be a local disk. It could be a, you know, some data set stored in S3 somewhere. You could have data coming in on a flight connection. Um, you could have data that is already in memory. And if you think of the pandas use case where your data is in memory and you're just going to stream through the table that you have and build out another table in memory, that fits as well. Um, and here we're transforming one of those sources. So Maybe uh, one of the sources has a 64-bit ID column, and the other one has a 32-bit integer ID column. So we go ahead and cast them to a common data type. And then you know we could join them, again, maybe on that ID column. So we join those two data sources on the ID column, and it goes on and on and on. So there are a number of operators and nodes that are built into Acero today, uh, solving kind of traditional relational algebra. But Sarah is not really limited to any particular paradigm. Uh, there is a speaker talking at the data thread about some time series analysis work that's being done on top of Acero. Uh, you could use Acero for doing, you know, you could plug in your own custom function that does whatever you want. Maybe you have some kind of machine learning model that you want to apply to your data as it's streaming through. Or maybe you want to build up a machine learning model in a streaming fashion. Uh, Cero should be able to be used for that. When you're done, you can take your transformed batches. You could write them back out to a file. You could send them over flight, collect them in memory. Again, as far as the Cero is concerned, it's a bunch of record batches coming in, transforms them, and those transformed record batches go out the other end. So the next question you would probably have is why? Um, what makes this arrow unique in a landscape that has hundreds, if not thousands, of existing solutions? I probably cannot completely answer that question. But one of the things that's fairly uh, distinct about a arrow is that most of the people that use a arrow are never going to be aware that they are doing so. A arrow is not a solution or a big application uh, that's really targeted at end users. Um, Acero is a Lego piece. It's a building block meant to build applications uh, around Apache Arrow. Um, I think 
we're entering a phase that's very exciting where Apache Arrow is going to be used for a lot of different uh, applications and products that are out there. And Acero is a fundamental piece that can be used in many of these applications as they get developed. Um, and that allows us to bring some uh, vertical scaling and performance and efficiency to this query engine path. Um, and that's one of the things that we do focus on in Acero is we want to make this um, you know, fairly efficient and take full advantage of the hardware resources that we have. Um, so I used to do a lot of work with customers that would consider big data to be 500 gigabytes of CSV files. And their analysis was that they had one person whose job it was is to take all these CSV files, feed them into Excel, and then run some pivot tables and generate some kind of report. Well, if you looked at automating this poor person's job so that they could back to doing something fun, um, one of the things that you would often run into is that a lot of the solutions out there say, oh, you just build up a big cluster. First, you go out and you buy $150,000 of hardware. Uh, if you have 500 gigabytes of data, that should be something that you can you know, run the occasional OLAP query on using a server or a laptop without too much trouble. Um, and so, you know, with Acero, we hope to be able to maximize the performance of a single node. Um, and Acero itself is not clustered, but it could be a component of a clustered solution somewhere. We want to be able to run in as many places as possible. Uh, so we're built on top of the Arrow C++ library. We share some of their CI infrastructure. So we test on Windows, Mac, and Linux today. Um, most of the work in Acero today is on the CPU, but we're definitely open to the idea of that work being farmed off to whatever specialized hardware you have attached to your server as well. And finally, uh, we want Acero to be you know, it is an open source project. We want it to be an accessible open source project. We want it to be something that people can build a wide range of applications on top of. Um, so, you know, our idea is to make Acero fairly robust and extendable. Um, we have a big focus on maintainability and uh, extensibility as well. So Acero is this, again, it's a Lego block that can be used in a lot of different applications. And I'm excited to see a lot of the different places that it can be used going forward. So the last thing I want to point out is that a lot of people have already been using Acero and they're not even aware of it today. Um, Pi Arrow datasets is built on what used to be completely the C++ datasets module. And over time, a large portion of the C++ datasets code has evolved into what is now called Acero. Um, same thing with the Arrow R dplyr integration. If you've used that dplyr integration, then you've been using Acero, um, or at least what is now called Acero, and probably not even aware of it. Um, and the point here is that this isn't something that just sprang out of thin air or that we're, you know, is brand new. This is something we've been working on for a while, uh, and it's been evolving into this shape of a query engine. And I think uh, now that it's kind of all coming together, it's really exciting to see the different applications that might arise from it. So um, let's go ahead and let Vibhatha give a quick demo of what it's like to use Acero. Hello, I'm Vibhatha Bacon. I'm a developer for the Apache Arrow project. Today I'll be showing you how to use Acero with PyArrow. Let's get started. In this demo, we'll discuss how Acero can be used with PyArrow. So some of the features that we'll discuss in this demo are not released in the existing stable releases of PyArrow, but these features will be released in upcoming PyArrow releases. So let's start with installing a nightly version of PyArrow. So here we're installing 9.0.0.122 uh, version. Okay, we install that. Now let's import the libraries. We need the PyArrow and the dataset API. And for this demo, we'll be using New York uh, Taxi Driver Trip dataset. You can find about the dataset from this link and we'll be downloading uh, a dataset represented in Parquet format. Okay, now we download the data. 
let's use uh, arrow data set to load the data so we provide the file name and file type and here you can see there are multiple fields so the objective is to select a partial amount of features and use these existing features to engineer new features so that's what we'll be doing in the data processing task let's see how acero can be used to do that so if you scroll down uh, what we're trying to do is we're trying to create a projection here we are going to select a set of columns uh, from this uh, set of columns and also create new feature using existing columns. For instance, we are trying to calculate the time taken for the trips. To do that, we need the drop off time and pick up time and later on we convert it into a duration in seconds. So this, this is a pyro expression. We're not going to go into a deeper level of explaining how uh, pyro expressions can be written but uh, this is an expression that will be evaluated when the projection is called. So in projection what we do is we create a dictionary, we write the mappings of the expression uh, into the field that we'll be naming with. For instance, uh, rather than having a TPEP pickup date time, we'll have pickup date time. So it's just an expression and we map it to the field name that we need in the projected uh, data set. So to do that, uh, in the data set, we have to call this scanner function. So to do that, we pass this uh, projection and then convert it to a table. So underneath, there's a scanning uh, node uh, in Nacero that's been used to do this function. Let's run it. You can see that these are the selected columns and this is the newly calculated column. If you're familiar with Pyro, uh, the Compute API in Pyro can do this same task. Let's see how it can do it. Let's import Pyro Compute. Let's run this cell and I'll describe what's going on here. So we convert the existing data set into a table and from Pyro uh, Compute API we have the subtract function and cast function uh, and then we can do the same operation that we did with S0. Let's run it. But why do we want to do that? There are two reasons. In some of the computations, sometimes the data won't fit into the memory, and the computation may also take more memory. So in such cases, Acero can uh, help out with such computations because Acero is basically a streaming execution engine. But Pyro Compute API ex expects the data to fit into the memory. So that's the main difference. So whenever there's a task which takes more memory, uh, and it requires uh, more computation uh, that's being done with large data set, you can use S0. But with Pyro Compute API, there's a limitation. That's something to keep in mind. Let's run this assertion and see whether the results are same. So results are same. So far, we did a very simple computation on S0, uh, projection and calculating some values. But in some cases, the provided functions in the existing computation APIs won't be enough. We may need to write our own functions. In such cases, we'll have to write user-defined functions. In Pyro, we can write these user-defined functions and inside SRO, you can use this. But there are some specifics. In defining user-defined function, there's a one uh, limitation that you have to provide a context uh, parameter here. We're not going to discuss why we provide that, but this is provided for extending functionality and providing more capability for UDFs. Uh, and after this parameter, you can provide uh, as many parameters as needed for the task. And here what we are trying to do is, in the loaded data, we have a field called total amount. Let's say for the riders, we want to reduce some amount from the total amount. So we are just going to charge 85% of the total amount from the user. So here, what we do is, we assume we get this total co amount column and the percentage. So we multiply the total amount by the percentage. So that's the uh, definition of this function. And let's see how we can integrate this with PyArrow Compute API. This function is standalone, it's not registered with PyArrow Compute API. So here we have to register the function. To do that, we call this register scalar function and we pass in the function and uh, for that we have to give a function name and function document which contains the summary and description 
and also uh, we pass in the input parameter uh, data types and the names and also output parameter type. So let's register the function. Okay, we successfully register the function. Now let's see how we can use it in this uh, computation task. So at the moment, using UDFs in Arrow, there are two ways you can do that. You can either do it with datasets or you can directly call the uh, UDF function using the computation API. But here, we prefer calling it in the projection or via the dataset API. So we convert the preprocessed table into an intermediary dataset. And here we create the function arguments, which is uh, uh, expression to extract the total amount and again a scale expression which has the discount amount and then we pass these uh, function arguments when we are calling this function by function name uh, this API is not uh, seamlessly integrated yet so this work in progress so this will be improved further uh, for better usability and uh, apart from that we also pick two other fields let's give it a try Yeah, you can see that the total amount uh, discounted is also calculated and the extracted two fields are also there. Now we saw how Acero can be used to call UDFs. And then let's perform some aggregation task and group this data. And uh, here, what we are going to do is we are going to call a group by operation here, uh, group by the payment type, and when, then we do an aggregation on the total amount and total amount discounted by considering the mean function let's run it so what we did was we selected this group by type and calculated these values now we have summarized data but it's not sorted so let's sort the data so uh, here you can see the payment type it's not sorted so here we are sorting the values by payment type and you can see it's sorted so far we're done with the pre-processing task so what we did was we use acero to load a parquet data file then we used uh, some of the projections to get some of the uh, data into our preprocessing task and then from that task we gathered some data and then we wrote our own functions and used acero to do the preprocessing further and later on we did group by followed by aggregation and finally sorted the results and next what we're going to do is visualize the data so I'll run it then explain what we're going to do so in Python, Matplotlib is widely used plotting tool, but with Pyro, we cannot use Matplotlib directly. But we can easily convert a pandas uh, data frame, uh, Pyro table into a pandas data frame very efficiently. So here, the rest of the details are uh, Matplotlib related things. We create a figure and we provide payment type names. You can gather this information from the data source spec uh, provided in the link before. And then we provide the x takes y takes x label y label and title and select these two columns and you can see it's nicely plotted these two lines uh, so the chart contains all the expected values so we discuss how acero can be used to pre-process data and nicely visualize the pre-process outcome next on let's take a look how substrate can be used with pyro as same as before in this demo, we'll be using some of the uh, recently merged in features. So we'll be using a nightly version of Pyro. So we're installing 9.00.122. Just give it a couple of seconds. Okay, it got installed. And then we'll be uh, importing the substrate uh, libraries. And here what we are going to do is a very simple thing. So Substrate is also a work in progress and integration to Apache Arrow project is also in progress. But we have integrated some things. So today what we're going to show is how Substrate can be used with PyArrow. So uh, basically the support provided for Substrate will be extended in the upcoming releases. In today's demo, we'll showcase how a read operation can be executed uh, using Pyro. So first, uh, what we are going to do is uh, create some uh, random data here, uh, not really random, one through five, one column, a table, and we're going to save it uh, in arrow format. And then this is a sample substrate query where we define a read operation 
and it has the schema uh, of uh, I64 in 64 type uh, and the name is foo and it expects to read from the disk and we replace this file name placeholder with the file path that we just wrote it to and let's run this one just to get this string and finally we are executing a substrate uh, query here substrate run query ex uh, expects this realized span but here uh, if we use the third party system we'll be getting this serialized plan but for the sake of the demonstration purpose we created the plan and here we see just the plan and you can see the end outcome there's a pyro table uh, with the in 64 type and column name foo and this is the data so it's a pretty short demo on substrate usage but we expect to improve uh, substrate integration for arrow and while improving substrate uh, with Python integration as well. As we discussed in the demo, some of the features are being currently improved and integrated. So substrate is one of these features that we are currently working on improving. We have exposed it to Python, but we are adding more features like joins and filtering to do with substrate plans. And that's being a uh, work in progress and we'll have more cool features in the upcoming Pyro and Arrow releases. Join our community. There are many ways to contribute. You can join as a developer and start fixing some bugs and write cool features. And also there are plenty of ways to learn about Apache Arrow. There are Arrow cookbooks in C++, Python, R and Java. There are plenty of things we can do and improve the Apache Arrow project this way. We hope you join us and improve the project. Thank you very much for listening to our talk today. And there are some materials, the Google Collab notebooks and slide deck. All the information can be found in the description box below. Thanks again. Have a wonderful day.